Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about one of the important theorems we will leverage in, in the previous segment. Okay. Um, let us assume we have we have two numbers m1 and m2. The GCD uh, of these two numbers is one, meaning there's nothing common uh, that divides both numbers other than one. Okay. And the goal of this um, theorem is to, to find the value of x such that x is congruent to a1 mod m1 at the same time congruent to a2 mod m2. Okay, that's the goal. You could imagine from an application perspective, um, you have some number of items, you don't know how many. When you group by m1, you get a1 leftovers. When you group by m2, you get a2 leftovers. So you wanted to find out what could be the possible value of x, okay? There are multiple solutions to, to this problem. And I will explain to you how to find the value of x using the Chinese reminder theorem idea, okay? Along the way, I'm going to prove it as well. Although I have just uh, used two, two equations here or two congruences, it is easy to generalize this theorem for the n congruences, okay, using induction. All right, let's talk about a first system with two congruences and how to solve this. Let's take the first one, x is congruent to a1 mod m1. We can rewrite this just by applying the definition, right? All right, so let me take the first congruence and rewrite it as follows, just applying the definition. This means x must be is equal to some multiple of uh, m1, right? m1 times y plus a1. That's just coming from the definition of congruence. Okay, which means uh, as we did in the previous example, we will take this and substitute it in the second congruence. So wherever x occurs, we can substitute by m1 a plus uh, m1 y plus a1 is congruent to um, a2 mod m2, right? That's second uh, congruence. Okay. So now I'm going to simplify this further, right? And move around a1 and a2 to get m1 y is equal to a2 minus a1 right, mod m2, okay. Now we can do uh, some easy analysis uh, using the extended equilibrium algorithm. Since uh, m1 and m2 have no factors in common because of the assumption, there must exist a y. We, we can find that y using extended equilibrium algorithm, okay. So let's call that y to be some number b. We don't know exactly what it is, but it will be some number the extended equilibrium algorithm will find for us. Okay, given m1, a2, a1, m2, you can easily find a number y such that m1 times y is congruent to a2 minus a1. All right. So I am going to assume such a y is b. Okay, which means uh, you can generalize this right because of the congruence context. You could say the structure of y is um, m2 times z, oh, m2 times z. Okay, the reason I put m2 times z is that um, if you plug in uh, b plus m2 c into this congruence, right, what will happen? The m2 mod will cancel out this part. So you're left with only B, which is one of the solutions we got from extended equilibrium algorithm. Okay, so uh, just to clear, make it clear, um, if B is one solution to this congruence, we know that all other solutions are y plus uh, b, y equal to uh, b plus m two times z for some z. Okay, z is some integer. This z is some integer. Okay. All right. So and now we can think about um, this equation. This is the equation we need to solve. So we go back and substitute wherever 
twice by this number B plus M2 times Z. Z is any integer, by the way, it can be negative as well, okay? Plus A1, okay, all right. So I'm just substituting it here, which means um, I will rewrite it as A1 plus, so this is, what is this now? I wrote X as A1 plus M1B plus M1, M2Z, which means by the definition of congruence, uh, we can just say X is congruent to A1 plus M1B, right? Mod M1, M2, because that's just the definition of congruence, right? So we found the solution. The solution is this for this um, for the system of congruence. We know A1, say input. We know M1, M2. Uh, what about B? We don't know B, right? From from this input. Well, we can find B. B is nothing but a solution to this particular uh, congruence using extended equilibrium algorithm. So here you you see we are using all the inputs M1, A2, A1, M2 to find the B. So this is solvable. I will later revisit Chinese remainder theorem and show you a computational aspect of it, how you could write a program to, to find a solution, but this is the math behind it, okay? You, uh, along the way, I've actually explained to you the algorithm as well. Okay, so important thing to note is that the solution, um, we get a bunch of solution I mentioned. One solution is A1 plus M1B. Other solution is any multiple of um, M1, M2 added to A1 plus M1 plus B. A1 plus M1 times B will also satisfy these equations, these two, two congruences. We can actually check it. Let's take the first congruence. X is congruent to A1 mod M1, right? What if I put in the place of X, A1 plus M1B? So let me put it here, just checking it here. The proof is over. Um, so I'm going to check here. So I'm having A1 plus M1B, right? When I apply mod M1 on both sides, right? Uh, for, uh, when I apply mod M1 on this particular expression, this part, part will go away. So I'm left with A1, which is exactly what I need. What about the second one? Um, take A1 plus M1B and apply um, mod uh, M2 on it, okay? So for that, I'm going to make use of this particular um, 